With the passing of Ray Sawyer of Dr. Hook fame, we reached out to one of his old friends who actually toured with him when he was doing his solo stuff in the mid-80s, Ray Ellis. It was actually Ray who told us of Ray Sawyer's passing. Here's our conversation from earlier today talking about losing Ray Sawyer. Well, you know, uh, and just for you, uh, I didn't have enough time to sort of do a, like a, an homage but uh, like you have for all of your records. But I, I went and I got my Dr. Hook things in, and I pulled that one out, Lynx. Do you remember that one? Oh, my God. Yeah. But they have so many moments that when I was growing up, I remember hearing Sylvia's mother and thinking, is that a parody? Are they being serious? Because they, they sound like they're, they're, they're singing it with a wink in their eye, you know, that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, ev everything with a wink in their eye, absolutely, for yeah. sure. First of all, your reaction to, to Ray's passing. I was, I thought, well, he's one of those guys you think he's going to live forever because he was larger than life. He was not a big guy, but he just, as soon as he walked in the room, he just, everybody looked at, well, I guess, right? You know, with the patch and everything. Uh, remember when I met him, it was in Red Deer, a little tiny bar. We were going to hook up with him, rehearse for a couple of days, and then start the tour. And we got to this place, and uh, the place was just jammed. And over in the corner, sort of unobtrusive like, uh, is Ray Sawyer. And all night, people kept coming up and, are you Ray Sawyer? And he goes, well, I, my mama didn't name me that, but yeah, I think I'm, you know, I'm the guy's name. But to, to think, right, in, Ray, in Red Deer, Alberta, of all places, you're going to find, just, man, aren't you Dr. Hook? And sure enough. And the odd thing about it was he wasn't the big hit guy, you know. He was the funny guy. He did the cover of the Rolling Stone, and he did the more novelty kind of tunes, whereas Dennis the Poirier was the soul, right? He had the soul voice, the, the raspy soup, his mother. So how did it start for you? Like, how did how, how did the call come? Well, I was touring with a gal named Kalita Haverland. And uh, I was touring with uh, Ronnie Prophet and uh, Kalita Haverland and people like that. They knew I was a Dr. Hook fan from Sylvia's mother, you know, right from 1969, 70, whenever it was. I first heard it, I thought, wow, what a cool voice. And I knew all the songs. Like, we, I was in a band called Rainbow Wind, and we used to, that was my, my thing. I would do a few Dr. Hook tunes, and this would have been 1978 through 80. I was doing Dr. Hook tunes. In 1986, I'm touring with Kalita, and uh, hey, you know a guy named Ray Sawyer? Yeah, Dr. Hook or something, right? Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to tour with him. You want to do that tour? <laughs> yeah. So that's how it started for me. And then that second was like, I knew that this was going to be great because I already knew everything flat. I can just sit in and I can play. I was, I was, uh, not the not the bass player. Normally that was my gig, but for this one, I was uh, rhythm guitar. So that was a pretty easy flip. I could do that too. But I knew all the songs of Dr. Hook and everything, so we show up and we're ready to go. And all new stuff. He's got to, he wants to push his original stuff. Oh, and and how much of his original stuff did you guys play together? Oh, a lot of a lot of his stuff was his new album. But he did, you know, the usual Dr. Hook stuff. Cover the Rolling Stone. Uh, I got stoned and I missed it. Uh, what he didn't do was a lot of the disco -y stuff, you know, like Sexy Eyes didn't do that. But um, yeah. The funny thing is, the first and only time I ever saw a row of women lifting their tops was the first night that we ever... <laughs> Sorry, you, you cut out there. A row of women lifting their tops, row, you said? A row of women lifting their tops. The first time and last time I'd ever seen that was with Ray Sword. And it was the first night. I thought, oh, this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> Never happened again. Well, at least it happened once, though. Not it everyone can say that. Yeah, it happened once. So what was he like to tour with? I mean, was he as much of a character off stage? Yeah, he really was. I mean, you can have your uh, Snoops and your uh, Billy Nelsons. I think I put Ray up there. Well, he was Mr. Party Animal. The, the thing that he was discovering when we toured together were uh, something called B-52 shooters. And he would order a tray of B-52 shooters and plant them on amp and 
mm-hmm. multiple times throughout the show, he would come back and come back and help be 52 shooters. And when the tray was empty, he go, hey, you got me flying out one way. And it, so he was pretty wild. He had a tolerance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after the show, uh, you would think that he would be the party animal, but it was not the case. He would be back in his room by himself, and I'd get the phone call at 3 a.m. Hey, Ray, this is Ray. Get down here. We meet him. So I'd dutifully get down. Ray Sawyer just called me. So until daylight, we're, he's telling me about his third eye because he lost his eye in the 1967 crash, and that gave him a third eye, and he's talking all this mystical stuff, and I'm oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, But he had the best stories about uh, being in the studio next to Sly and the Family Stone and partying with those guys in L.A. And, but, uh, yeah, it was just rock history uh, ground zero. I mean, I don't know if you feel like you're getting old because, and I do a <laughs> lot of these obituaries. That's how this channel started. I, I always feel old, and but I know it's coming, but I'm always surprised whenever someone passes. Yeah, yeah, and we also lost Ronnie Prophet this year, <clears throat> which was a big blow. For my circle, because I, well, I, I stuck my uh, tour jacket up there for you. That's from 1985, I think. It's tour jacket with uh, the J.K. Gully Band. You know, you can't live in Canada and not have, as I said with Ray, when it comes to growing up in the 70s, not have a dose of Ronnie Prophet. Oh, yeah. Well, watch this show every, whatever it was, Saturday night or something. That was, that was all we had. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music, and Happy New Year.